I'm so excited. We're going to my favorite restaurant. I love this place. Oh, yeah. You said you had something you wanted to talk to me about. Uh, yeah. Before we go in. You don't want to go in. Why not? There's just some things I wanted to talk about here, just so we don't make a big scene. Hold on. Are you breaking up with me? No, I'm not breaking up with you. I just wanted to have a DTR. A DT what? You know, define the relationship. What's there to define? I mean, we're dating, aren't we? Yeah, there's just some th uh, uh, there's just so much more we could have. There's so much about you that I w uh, that I want to know and that I don't know, and there's so much about me that you don't know, but I want you to know it. I just want to figure out where this whole thing is headed. I can tell you exactly where this is headed. Listen, I'm hungry. Let's go inside and get something to eat. I mean, I'm starving. You look like you're starving. Wait a minute, I look like I'm starving? Am I too skinny for you? No, that's not what I said. Is that it? I'm just skin and bones? No, I never said that. You're not skinny at all. So you're calling me fat now? No, that's not what I said. So one minute you can't wait to go in a restaurant, and the next you're telling me I need to lose weight? Wow, I guess I was right about us not knowing each other. What? I mean, I didn't, know that, I didn't know that I was too fat for you, and apparently you didn't know that I had feelings. Enjoy your meal, alone. What are you doing? I just wanted to say, I love you. Um, thanks. Can we go eat now? Good morning, everyone. I'm Polina, and I'm an eighth grade student from Forest Lake Education Center. And today, we're going to be sharing with you why trust is a big part of our relationship with God. Good morning. OK, so the definition of trust is a firm belief in something, truth, ability, or strength. And I'm Maggie Dellinger, and bow your heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please be with us today as we speak about trust and how we can have a better relationship with you. And please bless everyone who's up here. Amen. Amen. So a lot of times in our life, we face challenges that it's hard for us to trust God in. So a story that I'm going to tell you guys is something that we both went through together, and it was how, how we got tested by God and how we trusted him. So about a year and a half ago, me and Polina were on our way back from our volleyball game. We won. Yay. <laughs> and we were all excited and listening to music in the car, and all of a sudden, the unexpected happened. So we're standing in a light, and we're about like literally a mile from our house, and then a car runs into us. And it was pretty chaotic. There was like a bunch of people, but what we didn't know was how this would change our future season. Right, so we were, after the crash, we were like kind of scared and like didn't really know what happened, and we were kind of doubting God. So we were new to the season, and we had a bunch of upcoming games, and we were kind of like questioning God, like why did he do this to us now? Like why this time, you know? And we were asking ourselves, what did we do wrong? Right, we were talking to each other the next morning. She called me. <laughs> I was like, Maggie. And I was like, what? And she's like, and we, we like, just got in a car crash. And I was like, oh my golly. <laughs> yes. We are kind of excited because we didn't get to go to school. But we had to realize that God had a plan for us because we didn't know why this happened to us. But what we didn't know was that God had a plan for us and that we have to put our trust in him. So the, upcom the past weeks after that, we found a verse, and it's Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. So this verse helped us a lot because we realized that like, we needed God and we needed to put our trust in him and that he would lead our way. And a Bible story that we kept in mind during this time was about Abraham. So everyone knows the story of Abraham, but I'll tell you anyway. So <laughs> Abraham had his son Isaac, and God told him to sacrifice him. And that's a pretty big deal because it's his son. And he trusted God through the entire thing. Everybody knows he ended up not sacrificing his son Isaac. But if he didn't trust God and didn't keep his faith and didn't like doubt God, then he wouldn't be where we are today. So we want you guys to realize that trusting the Lord is what a big part of our relationship with God, and it can really be like the foundation. So we challenge you guys today to really go out of your comfort zone on some things that you may be doubting and put all your trust in God. So an example of this is, is for us sometimes, like if you have an upcoming test or a new assignment or something like that and you're not ready for it, you can just say, give it to God. Our teachers always say, if you have a question you don't know, give it to God. And sometimes that's hard for us, but that's really what we need to do. Or if you're like running late for work or anything like that, that's our challenge. So hopefully you guys will trust in God, and we hope that you realize that he has a path for us, and just let him take the wheel.
Thank you for shopping at Piggly Wiggly. Have a Piggly Wiggly day. Hey, Bill. Hey, uh, Sally. Grocery shopping? Uh, yeah, that's what people usually do at the grocery store. Pot pies instead of hot pockets, huh? What's going on? I don't know, just been for pot pies, I guess. But that's not what you got last week. That's just a little strange to me, but no big deal. Two percent milk instead of skim? Are you okay? Yeah, what are you talking about? Nothing. It's just that you think you know someone, and then it turns out that you don't. Is there something wrong? Yes, there is, Bill. I think it's time for us to have a DTR. A DTR? What is there to find? You're the checker at the grocery store. I'm sorry. This line is closed. What are you doing? I just want to pay for, for my groceries and leave. You want to leave? Have I done something wrong? Are you mad at me? Because there are clearly things that you aren't telling me. I mean, 2%? Come on, Bill. Talk to me. We can't work this thing out if you don't talk to me. I don't know why I need to explain myself. Because I am not a mind reader, Bill. I know. You're the checker at the grocery store. But things are changing between us, and I can't keep up. Oh, first it'll be pot, hot pockets to pot pies. But next thing you know, it'll be orange juice to grapefruit juice. And then it's just a couple steps from regular to decaf. Is this what you want to happen, Bill? Is it? I just want to... I scan and I scan and I scan. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say, I love you. Thanks. I'm going to run for my life now. The plan of God is first and foremost for you to have a relationship with him. He wants you to identify in his will and work in this world, but he wants you to first identify with him. He invites you to be forgiven and enjoy his life in you. He wants to be your father and desire that you be his child. This relationship with God can happen only when you realize that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. This reconciliation can come to pass only when you realize that your sin has separated you from God. Only the death of Christ on your behalf can put that right. When you believe that God can make some things right with you, then you repent and ask for forgiveness, and he grants you his Holy Spirit. At this point, your relationship with God has moved forward. John 15, verse 12 through 15 says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love is none than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, no longer do I call you servants. For servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you for friends, for that all I have heard, my father, I have made you known. John 15, verse 12, 15. Jesus calls us to be his friends, and he wants to be in a relationship with us. Throughout the Gospels, we see the friendship of Jesus and his disciples develop. Although their intent was to serve and follow Jesus as master, he calls them friends, and even hints at his coming, death to show that how deep his love will go. Jesus' love and sacrifice for those he walked with is the ultimate example of this relationship. Though we may not physically lay down our lives for our friends, we can sacrifice for others just as he sacrificed for us. All right, we're going to cut shampoo. Vicky? Joanna, hi, how are you? Wow, it's been so long. I know, things have been so crazy lately and I needed a trim, so I thought I'd just pop in and... Um, are these highlights? Um, yeah. They're good. Thanks. And um, are those layers? A few. Um, Vicky, I don't remember putting layers in your hair. I think we need to have a DTR. What? There's nothing to talk about. I just came to my hairstylist to get things in shape. I need you to answer me truthfully. Is there someone else? I just wanted to try something different. I always go here. It didn't mean a thing. So what? You couldn't call? You couldn't get some advice before you made some rash decision? Before you let some wacko crazy person cut your hair? You had no idea what you were getting yourself into. It's just a haircut, Joanna. What's the worst that could happen? Vicky, 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 you are so naive. Whoever this person was, they were teasing you. What? I can look at your split ends and tell they teased your hair. Joanna, it's not like that. I like you. I came back. What's the point? What's the point to keep you from going to the next haircutter you see walking down the street? 
You know I haven't been to a different place in years. Joanna, that's not fair. I just came for a simple haircut. What are you doing? Vicky, I don't just want to be a rebound hairdresser. I want you to know that I love you. Aw, oh, thanks. I love you too. We are best friends after all. Now, are you okay to handle those scissors? <laughs> Good morning. Relationships. And when I was when I was asked to talk about relationships today, I was uh, I was a little nervous because personally, for my age, I think I've moved around quite a bit, and I haven't really been able to form long-lasting relationships. Every time I begin to to form a relationship, something comes up, and we we move away or or we move to a different neighborhood, and I don't really get to stay uh, in a relationship with these people, with anybody, really. And because of that, I, I, I questioned myself, and I asked, well, then who, who have I had a relationship with? We all need that someone to just vent to, tell, tell them how we're doing, how, how we feel. And then I remembered something that I've done almost every day of my life, something that my parents taught me from a very young age, and that was to pray. And every day, I, I, for some reason, it just stuck with me. And I, I've, I've prayed every single day because it's just something that I, I've learned to do. And it's not just like routine prayers. These, these are prayers that I'm, I'm telling God how I feel. I'm, I'm going to him like vulnerable and telling him how I feel. But thinking about it, up till about a month ago, I thought, I have a relationship with God. But thinking about it, I don't. Why? Because I'm doing all the talking. A relationship needs two people, and, and these two people have to communicate. They have to talk to each other. But if I'm doing all the talking, I don't have a relationship with God. It might be a, a sort of relationship, but it's not something that's, that's an actual relationship. There's no communication happening. It reminds me of one of uh, my favorite songs. The lyrics of it go, Somebody told me to be selfless, but we are helpless without attention. God is telling me, he's telling you, be selfless. Yes, talk to me, pray to me, but let me talk to you. Be selfless, but we are helpless without attention. So we just, we keep talking and we ignore God. And then when, when we, we go to God and we say, why have my prayers not been answered? Why haven't you spoken to me? And we're, we're so shocked when, when we don't get an answer, when in reality, we're, we're just not letting God talk to us. And it, one of these uh, phrases that you hear a lot is, really annoys me. It's, uh, it, it's, it's the phrase, always be praying, constantly pray, pray all the time, never stop praying. And I always, I always, it always bothered me because I'm, I'm not going to sit on my knees all day and pray. I, I, I'm a kid. I want to go out and play. I want to go to school. I want to, I want to grow up. I can't just sit here praying all day. And I, I thought, well, God, why do you want us to do this? I realized that when, he, when God tells us to always be praying, he doesn't mean to just stay on your knees and, and pray all the time. What God is telling us to do, God is telling us to have a relationship with him, to be in constant communion with him. If we're in communion with God, we have a relationship with him. First, we have to settle the communication part. We need to be selfless, right, like God tells us. And we need to let our guard down and let God talk to us. Read our Bible. And if we read our Bible in the morning, he'll talk to us the other day. We'll see it. So once we have communication set up, now we have to move on to communion, the actual relationship. We need to keep this relationship going. We need to make sure that every morning we wake up, we read the Bible, we talk to God. Let him talk to us. And then once we have that, we'll, we'll see God in, in everything around us. We'll hear him talking to us maybe through other people or maybe just our environment around us. We'll hear God. We'll feel him. And we'll, we'll hear him answering our prayers. And the third step after our communication and our communion is community. Now what's interesting about these three words is they all come from the same Latin root. It's comeris, and it means to share. 
and this goes back to the being selfless, we need to not be helpless without attention. We need to let, we need to share the relationship with God. And then once we share the relationship with God, we need to share that relationship, that communion with our community. Because then once that community, we, we, once we build up a community of God-fearing and worship-loving people, we can spread that message to the world. And, and it's not like this is something that isn't important, because this is one of the most important things in our lives, this relationship with God, because without it, you can't have salvation. You, you hear all the time people saying, to be saved, you just have to believe that, God, that Jesus died for your sins on the cross. And while it's true that you have to believe, you need, the only way that you can really believe it is if you have a relationship with God. Once you form this relationship and you have this communion with God, then you can actually believe, this guy, he, he died for me. He died to save me so that I could have an eternal life. And the best thing about all of this, uh, the best thing about having this, this communication, this communion, and this community is that not only do we have to share the love of Jesus between us and him and us and everyone around us, but at the end of the day, when we're off riding to heaven, you get to sit with the king of the universe and have a conversation. Thank you. Hey, Jessa. I think we need to have a DTR. I think that's a great idea, God. I mean, when I signed up onto this relationship, I thought that it was going to be a little more give and take. I'm, I'm sorry? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love this role you created for me to live in, and it's cool that Jesus was here and all, but what have you done for me lately? Excuse me? Seriously, I go to church regularly, I tithe faithfully, I turn the other cheek, I do all that stuff, but my life is still so stressful. There's all this pressure doing the right thing avoiding and avoiding temptation, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when is it going to let up? When do I get to see the benefits of this relationship? Jessa, I'm going to break some bad news to you. You don't get to define this relationship. I'm God, and you're not. But I will never rip you off. I will never forget about you. I care about you so much that I want to see you grow. And when you're experiencing stress in your life, I'm helping you grow. I have great things planned for you if you will persevere. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Well, maybe if you give me a hint of where all this was going, then... Then you wouldn't need to have faith in me. I've asked you to walk by faith, not by sight. It's just, I feel so out of control. Good. You're not supposed to be in control. I am. Jessa, I created everything that exists with just the words of my mouth. I put everything in order. I control nature and tell the oceans where to start and stop. I created gravity to make sure things don't fall off this planet as it flies around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. I know where you've been, and I know what's right around the corner. I have you in the palm of my hand, and I will not drop you. So, I'm just supposed to trust you? Yes. It's called faith. Your faith in me helps define where you are in our relationship. What are you trying to tell me, God? I'm telling you that you can trust me. Jessa, I love you. Thanks. I love you too.